I'm going to take my time and go through this with you guys so you can, uh, you can see it. Um, one of the things the Lord spoke to me, I'm going to read first to you, is uh, you start looking at the, you know, just watching the Spirit move, but you start looking at the ama what God has done is, is just so absolutely amazing. But something the Lord had put on me this week, if you was here Wednesday, I kind of read it to you. But this is what the Lord had put on me. Um, he had given me this, which was called, What and Why? And uh, the question um, to you guys is, we want to be able to have the ability of not only being able to tell people what we believe, but why we believe that way. That's because just telling people you believe in Jesus is, is not enough, especially in the world that we live in today. You know, to the world that we live in today, seeing is believing. The other thing I want to tell you is that don't compare gifts, your gift and my gift and everybody, because we all have different gifts according to the Lord. So when I read this to you, you know, it doesn't matter that uh, I'm not trying to say you need this, you know, uh, you need to be like me or I need to be like you because we all come together and make the body, okay? Um, and it's all about Him. But what we do need, we need to really be able to tell people, you know, if you tell somebody what you believe, man, I believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Why? And then, for the most part, you know, well, because I just do. But that, and that's kind of where it ends with the majority, because I do. But that isn't what God has called us to. God has called us to study to show ourselves approved and, you know, to be a workman who, you know, study to show thyself approved unto him, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That whole deal is God has called us to be ambassadors for him, every one of us in here, to give us the ministry of reconciliation, to be able to reconcile the world that is out there that's lost back to him to be able to have the ability to hey let me show you why I believe the way I do you know and you don't have to know the whole entire Bible nobody does you know what I mean but you want to be able to you know point out a few things and take them you know because the, the reason that you're studying is to show yourself approved unto, unto God that's the whole purpose, right? So that us as ambassadors can win others over. Because if you confront anybody else out there, if it's a, you know, uh, someone in another false religion, believe me, they'll pour it on you why they believe the way they do, you know? So anyway, this is what I wrote. What and why the Lord had given me. Do you value the Word of God? Question. Well, if you do, you not only need to tell people what you believe, but why you believe the way you do. Telling someone you believe in Jesus is not enough. Tell them why you believe in Jesus. You need to have the ability, meaning the power, to be able to persuade and convince people what you believe is true. Right? You need to be able to communicate effectively for the kingdom of God and for the one that you're representing, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah. You got that? Yeah. Um, so first, you have to have a message. The message. And you're going to need facts, 
authenticity, sincerity, and credibility. Without you having a credible life, the message of the gospel, of what you believe in, and why you believe that way, it'll never be received. So today, on the Feast of Tabernacles, I'm going to tell you what I believe and why I believe this way. So here's the message. Y'all ready? Yes. The message actually started a long time ago. It started a long time ago when God gives us these puzzle pieces and then we begin to put these puzzle pieces together and what happens is you guys know that in the stories of the old covenant it's all you know pieces of the puzzle and every little piece that's in there every story that's there it shows you uh, it gives you a, a, a glimpse of Jesus well right now it's almost like God has taken all of those puzzle pieces that he showed me and then just started you know just putting them all together to just reveal something that is like absolutely amazing and I we've been talking about how the feast of Passover and Yom Kippur the spring and fall feasts are actually one and the same they're two different but they're actually one and that's what I'm going to get into today with you. So, um, in order to be able to get into, uh, in order to be able to get into that with you, I got to go through um, a few things. Okay. Um, I want to take you and show you that in this revelation that we're going to get into. It actually goes all the way back to the very beginning at the fall and brings us all the way to, you know, what Christ did for you and me. And we have a, uh, an inclination of what that is. But if we go back to the very beginning, you know, we find, you know, the entrance or an exit, the Garden of Eden and exit, you know, Adam being exited out. We're going to find the entrance, the beast, the palm frond, the coats, the cross, the water gate, the thieves, the two trees, the twelve stones, the new holy city, and you find how it all comes into one picture. Now, I want to start on the Feast of Tabernacles where Christ began His ministry. And where He began His ministry at was at the Jordan River. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start you at the Jordan because the Jordan is so... It's the, like, it's the, it's the key that's going to bring us to where it is that we need to go. Okay? So watch this. And when you start getting the stories, um, when you read in the Old Covenant and uh, you find out, and I'm only going to give you just a few of the things that happen right there at the Jordan so we can begin to tie this together. Okay? So, uh, the Jordan River. Um, and you guys take into consideration what I've been talking about, what we've been going over, what happened at the Jordan and all of that. So check this out. The place where John baptized, the Jordan River. Y'all ready? Watch this. Uh, the place where John baptized was called was in the Jordan, and it was a place called Bethabara, which means the the gate or the door, or it's called the threshold of the passageway. So the Jordan River where Jesus was baptized is a gate or a door. It, and I told you guys how it was called the water gate, right? And we know how Joshua stepped in and it rolled back, right? The gate opened because it was a representation of Jesus Christ and all of this. Only by the blood does the gate open. Okay. Um, it was John's site for baptism. That's where he baptized at. 
So John comes to this place, very important. It was the site of Joshua's crossing, where Joshua crossed the Jordan in the exact same place, right? It was the place where 12 stones were set up in that Jordan as a memorial. And you're going to begin to see how, you know, all of the, 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 the treasures that God had revealed to me, the 12 stones, don't worry about uh, Nick, don't even, man, just, he's good. He's a, we love him. You just pay attention. I don't even worry about him. He's not bothering us. So we find out that this site has been marked by God, okay? Joshua sets the 12 stones up in air, right? It was a place of sacrifice, right, at the Jordan River. Now how was it a place of sacrifice? I told you, this is where God put Adam and Eve out of the garden, the water gate open, and he built the fir first altar right there in the Jordan. This was the site of Jesus' baptism. And you guys know when I taught about the 12 stones that, that Joshua had put there 1,500 years before Jesus got there was for Jesus Christ to come and stand on. It was an altar. It was, you know, right? So here in, it's 12 stones in the Jordan. It was the place where God's voice was heard. Right there. Jesus came there in the Jordan. The heavens rolled back. And I told you guys how that was the water gate opened above. It was the place the Holy Spirit descended upon. Right? This is a place of an altar where the waters were. And the altar and the laver and everything is right there. Um, this is the place where the 50 prophets of Elisha. Elisha lived in Gilgal. Now, if you remember, that's where Joshua crossed the Jordan and set the other altar up in Gilgal. Remember? You're going to follow this. It's a map. It's a road map. So it's the place where the 50 prophets of Elisha wanted to come and build a house. How do we know that? When Elisha was in Gilgal, the 50 prophets, 50 is Pentecost, which is a spirit. The spirit, you can say, wanted to go to the Jordan. They asked Elisha, can we go to the Jordan for the house that we're living in now in Gilgal? It's too small. We need a bigger house to live in. The spirit needs a bigger house. Elisha, can we go to the Jordan and build a house? And Elisha says, go. So now, a house is being built there, right? This is where Jesus was filled. Uh, 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 his physical temple was filled with the Spirit. We know that the 50 prophets go there. They're in representation of the Spirit to the same exact place where John was baptizing, where there was a Jordan. All of this ties in. This is the place of the lost axe head. Right? They were cutting down trees at the Jordan, right? And the axe head was lost, you know, and one of them said, Oh, you know, we lost the axe head. Well, you know, it, it sunk. And, and Elisha, whose name means Jesus, says, Where did you lose it at? And it, so he cuts down a tree and throws it in the water, and the axe head, which is an, a representation of Jesus Christ, right? We're going to see that at the Jordan right here, this axe head, uh, some 600 years before Jesus Christ comes, this axe head goes down to the bottom, lands on 12 stones, throws, uh, Elisha throws a rod in it, and the axe head is resurrected. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right? Wow. This is the place where Elijah and Elisha crossed over the Jordan, where Elijah took off his mantle, slapped the water, and it parted. This place is, you know, we know that in there is the 12 stones and they go across to the other side, right? This is the very same place where fire descended, right? How? The Bible says that Elijah, when a chariot of fire came down, it was described as fire, a chariot of fire, which then becomes a whirlwind. Wow! The Holy, the Holy Spirit in the upper room came as a wind and cloven like tongues of fire. What? You see, watch this. 
Then, this is the place of the first sacrifice where God led Adam and Eve out of the garden, built the first altar there. Here we got Joshua building an altar there, marking this spot, commemorating it. This is the place where God's Lamb is identified. John the Baptist. Behold, God's Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Where, the, where God killed the first Lamb. The place of identification. This is the place of skins. Skins, right? Meaning, this is the place that God, you know, um, uh, took Adam and Eve out of the garden and clothed them with skins and put shoes on their feet. Why? Because the ground was cursed. It brought forth thorn and thistle and it was sent out in the wilderness. That's why it talks about, you know, in the wilderness, if you know anything, there's shoes marked called, uh, out in the stone, carved out in the stone. Shoes, I told you guys, represent the curse. Remember that? The only reason we wear shoes today is because the ground's cursed. Walk outside and go walk in the rocks. <laughs> Right? You're going to find out rocks represent a curse. Are you serious? Yeah. Watch this. This is the place of shoes, where shoes was put on their feet because of the curse. And that's why I told you guys that shoes represent the gospel. Right? We know that. It's in the full armor of God in Ephesians 6. It represents the gospel which removes the curse. That's why Jesus had to wash their feet. Right? If your feet are clean, your whole body's clean. When he sent the disciples out, he said, if they don't receive you, shake the curse off your feet, off your shoes, the curse. Shoes represent the curse. That's why when Moses came into the presence of God, God said, remove your shoes for the ground you're standing on is holy. It's smooth. No curse there. You don't need shoes. That's why you see the angels, you see Jesus, you, you never see them with shoes in the resurrection, in the resurrected part. Right? They don't need them. Watch this. It's the place of separation, this place. How do we know that? God came to there, put Adam and Eve out of the garden. You see, you'll never be able to connect what it is that God is fully trying to show you if you don't study His Word to put the full puzzle together to be able to see what it is that He's trying to show you. You need, these are pieces to the puzzle that you and I need. Now if you're trying to convince somebody that this spot is a place of, of significance, I think, I mean I just went through about 12 or so, 13, this is pretty significant, right? This is a place of the serpent. What? The serpent, yeah. How was that? This is the place where God put Adam and Eve out of the garden, right? And read them, it was a place of judgment where the serpent had now, we're going to be laid down, eat the dust of the earth. The place of the serpent is there, judged right there. Place where Adam and Eve is judged right there. Jordan, Dan is judgment. It's, it's a place of judgment. You're going to see that again. It's the place where God said He's going to make the crooked path straight. It's the place where the rough, way, the rough ways shall be made smooth. It's all right here. What? It's the place of healing waters where the healing waters are going to flow to when the Lord returns. This very place. It's the place where Abraham's seed crossed over the twelve tribes. It's the place where Naaman received new skin. He baptized seven times in this very place. The leper. Naaman the leper had a skin problem. This is the place where skins were wrapped around Adam. This is a place where when he baptized there, he received a new skin. The place of skins. Wow. This is the place of judgment, right? Because, you know, um, and you're going to see why. It's a place, well, it's a place where God judged Adam and Eve for what they did. It's a place of repentance and cleansing. You know, you got to go to the Jordan, repent and be baptized, John said. It's a place of repentance and baptism, cleansing. 
It's the place of, um, of, uh, of skins, clothing, and provision, food. Place of food and provision. New skins and food. How is that? When, you know, God put Adam and Eve out of the garden, right there, he killed, sacrificed the lamb, clothed them in a skin, fed them with the lamb, right? Put shoes on their feet and sent them out into the wilderness of sin that was cursed. It's a place of separation. It's a place where the kingdom was lost. Right? Place where it was lost. It's a place, it's the place where it will be physically taken back. The Bible says that the Lord rides in from the east, also into the west. He rides into the eastern gate, right? It's the place of the floating axe head. It's the place of exiting and wandering because you've been kicked out. It's the place to be remembered forever. And it was commanded by God. I've just touched on maybe 27 things from my memory, not going and looking, to show you how when God shows you something, the gigabytes that's in your brain that He's given you starts going bam, 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 and all of a sudden they start, hold on, they start connecting dots all over the place. That's what, you know, that's what He's called you and me for. So that we can, He can show you. You start getting these little puzzle pieces all over the place so He can bring together this picture so that you can show Jesus to the world. <clears throat> now watch. So now, I want to show you that I just took you to the Jordan River. And I showed you all the things that was right there going all the way back to when Adam was put out of the garden, right? So now, let's go to Luke chapter 3. You ready? Luke chapter 3. I'm going to read to you something here in Luke chapter 3. Watch this. This place where John the Baptist is baptizing Jesus. We just read this. Oh my Lord. Watch this. Watch this. Because it was for a reason. It shows you it's the same spirit. Nick read it yesterday and I didn't tell him anything. He was reading it yesterday in the van, Luke 3. I saw him. Now watch. Now what I'm going to do is everything that happened then what's going to happen now is you're going to see it's Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Right? Now, Luke chapter 3. Let's read Luke chapter 3. And I'm going to go down um, to verse 3. It says, um, let me go to verse 2. Ananias and uh, Caiaphas, being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. So this is uh, Zechariah whom they slew between the altar and the, and the holy place. Um, that is John the Baptist's father. It says, And he came, John, and he came into all the country about, and he came into all the country about the Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance and the remission of sins. Right? That's what John is preaching. He comes to this very spot. Watch this. Because, and he comes out of the wilderness of sin. John does. And he says, when he comes, he says, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, he's connecting Isaiah the prophet, saying, 
the voice of one crying out of the wilderness. Isaiah prophesied that one would come to prepare the way. And this is John. It says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Where John is standing in the Jordan is the way to the Lord. Right? This is the entrance he's come to. And they all know it. They know where Adam and Eve was put out of the garden. And you're going to see this. He didn't come to this spot for any reason. It's a marked location that they were looking for to hear something because God didn't say anything for 400 years. 400 years later, John begins his ministry in the threshold of the door on Yom Kippur. And he says, right? Um, Isaiah the prophet, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make His paths straight. Every valley, right? Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. The crooked path, the crooked, shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. This is the curse that's going to be removed. This is what John comes up saying and talking about, and he's standing in this location. They know this is where God, where the curse happened, where everything went down, basically, where they're looking for a Messiah to come, who's going to straighten out the path, make the, the, uh, the places smooth, drop the mountains down, raise up the valley, everything is smooth, and you don't need no shoes anymore. The rough places are now smooth. He says, and, he's, and he says, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And this location. And he says, Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers. What did you say? <laughs> My wife said I was going to say that. <laughs> Listen. Here it is. 4,000 years later. Where God put the... Where God put Adam and Eve out of the garden... Here they, uh, John the Baptist comes to that very place. Now remember, this is where God put the curse on the snake. The snake. Right? John comes and saying, you're going to see him connect every dot back to the garden. Because this is what it is. Right? He calls them, oh you generation of vipers. There's the snakes, right? Who hath warned you to flee the wrath to come? Right? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. And begin not to say, watch this. And begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up the children of Abraham. Do you know what John just said? Come on, brother. John made, listen, he's in the Jordan. He's done made a connection with the altar, with the snakes, but he says, don't say unto yourselves that Abraham is your father. God promised Abraham the promised land through his seed. His seed was the 12 tribes of Israel. That each stone represented a tribe. That's right. That Joshua had set up in the Jordan. They were, those 12 stones represented the seed of Abraham. John the Baptist is standing in the Jordan 
calls them serpents. <laughs> Who's called you to repentance? Because that was a place of repentance and death and sacrifice by God who set up the first altar, right? John is standing in the Jordan. They come to him. they on the other side. Who's called you to repentance? And don't say you have your father Abraham, right? As your, uh, as your father... Right? Because these 12 stones represent the seed of Abraham. John the Baptist literally and physically pointing at the 12 stones that's on side of his feet says, God is able to raise up these stones as the children of, Ab of Abraham. So when Jesus came to John in the Jordan, the altar was there and everybody knew it. It was prepared way before him, 1,500 years before John got there, God had Joshua put it there, right? Because that was the very first place that God built an altar. So here now, man, this is so important. You got John the Baptist literally saying that God is able to raise up stones, these 12 stones, unto the children of Abraham. So there it is, beyond the shadow of a doubt, the 12 stones were there, and Jesus stood on it. And when He stood on it, He said, Behold, God's Lamb, who takes away the sins of the world. And it says, and the, as the Jordan rolled back and opened up, as the water gate opened up horizontal from that place all the way to Adam, so when He stood on it, the, the, the water gate above rolled back and we've seen God. Like I told you guys before, remember? The, the Jordan rolled back. The, the heavens opened up and there was God and the Spirit descending right there, connecting this spot of significance, right? Watch. Amen. And he goes on to say, he says, um, in verse 9, and also, the axe is laid at the root. What? What? Elisha at the Jordan. When the axe head is lost, do you think that John the Baptist begins to, that he says, and the axe is laid at the root? Do you think that's by coincidence? No, because that's where the trees were cut down with the axe head, with Elisha. And he tells them, the axe head already at the root of the tree. You're the trees. And if you don't bring forth fruit, you'll be cut down by the axe head. John the Baptist is making a direct connection to Elisha at the Jordan River bringing us back to that point. Well, what happened with Elisha? They built a house there. An axe head. Death, burial, and resurrection. Elisha, whose name means Yeshua, Jesus, and the 50 prophets, the Holy Spirit, is building a house that they can live in. This house comes, what? 600 years later, and his name is Elisha. No, yeah, that's it. It's Yeshua. It's Jesus, in which the Holy Spirit comes down and lives in this house. Right there. And he says, this is the one. And if you don't produce fruit, he's going to cut you down with the axe head. But in order to do that, that axe head has to die. And it's going to be raised again. He's the one. He's the axe head. Ah! He's the axe head. Connect, connect, connect. This spot is of great significance. And John, the revelator, is saying... The one who comes here and stands on this altar, he's the one that's going to make the crooked paths straight. Amen. Bring every mountain down low. I think Jesus said, and if you say unto this mountain, to be thou removed and cast into the sea. I think Jesus also said something about he cursed the fig tree at its root because the axe is laid at the root of the tree. What? Every mountain shall be brought down. That's all part of the curse. 
and the valleys shall be filled in. Oh my God. That's a plain. Stop. The crooked paths straight okay. and the rocky places made smooth and you can take off your shoes. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch this. Oh, it gets better. And now the axe is laid at the root of the trees, and every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire, the place of judgment, the place where God had the first Hey, if you build an altar, you got to have a fire. God built an altar and consumed it with fire. So you got the altar. You have the fire that God. You have the Spirit, right? All in the same place. This is the place that Elijah and Elisha, the water gate opened. Elisha crosses over. Oh, wait a second. This is a place. This is the very place. You got to hear this. This is the very place that when Elijah slaps the water, Elijah goes to this place for a, a reason. Right? It opens up. The 12 stones are there. They cross over. What is it that you want from me? I want a double portion of what you got. If you see me taken up, if you see me taken up, you'll receive. But if you don't, and it says, and as they begin to go, as they begin to go, a chariot of fire came down. Right? Came down, which turned into a whirlwind. <laughs> right? And lifted Elijah up. And when Elijah went up, it says, and the mantle. Oh, wait, you have. The mantle of Elijah falls onto Elisha. Well, you know what? The word mantle means it's the word ohil, O H E L, which means the skin tent of David, the tabernacle of David. The tabernacle of David. Wow. Elisha, whose name means Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus was his David, his David, was his tabernacle. And God said in Acts 15, 16, and Amos 9, 11, that in the last days God would raise up the tabernacle of David that had fallen. David, the king, is gone now. And now, a man whose name means Elisha is standing at the Jordan. The same place, right? Who now a skin tent falls over him. Or oh, you can want to say pick it up and put it on him. It's literally mantle. It means skins. And the skins of Elijah fell down on Elisha. And he picked up the mantle from Elijah. And watch this. And slaps the water and said, Where is the God of Elisha of Elijah? Hallelujah. And the Jordan with the fifty prophets there opened up and they said, Surely the skin of Elijah is now the skin of Elisha. Wait, hold on a second now. Because, 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 because Elisha and Elijah, he wanted to be 
He wanted to be the heir. He wanted to be called the firstborn of Elijah. And the only way he, the only one I got the double portion is the firstborn. He asked Elijah for a double portion of what he had. He asked, I want to be your firstborn son. You, I'm going to connect another dot for you. Check this out. This is like mind-blowing when God's putting all of this stuff together. When God tells Elijah to go call Elisha, who's plowing the field with 12 yoke of oxen, that's Jesus, plowing the field with 12 disciples, it says that Elijah walked past and cast his skin on him. <laughs> Casted the tabernacle of David on him. He said, wait, wait. Let me go back and tell my mother and my father. And I'm going to come and follow you. And Elijah said, go. And you see what Elisha did? Elisha left the home of his mother and father. And to signify there was no going back, he burnt yeah. uh -uh. what he was plowing with in the field. The ox and the yoke. He made the yoke, made a fire with it, burnt an offering, and fed the people. There was no going back. It's different than when Jesus told the young, you know, when he puts forth the parable, any man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is not worthy. Why? Because once you put your hands to the plow and you start, if you go back, you see, that person that he was talking about, he never finished what was back there. Let me go back and bury the dead, my dead. No, let the dead bury the dead. But what is it to you? You, come and follow me. He should have dropped everything. He should have burnt it right there. Left the old life behind. Because Jesus was actually casting his mantle on you and me. Mm -hmm. ah! Hallelujah. Don't go back. Hallelujah. Haven't we picked up the skin suit of Jesus Christ? Wait, hold on a second. I think he tabernacles inside of you and me. Wait, we ain't even, we haven't even gotten to the fire yet. We haven't even gotten to the fire. Let's go. Verse 10, And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said unto them, Oh, verse 11, Listen,